Thank you for listening to today's Sovereigns podcast on KBRA's 2022 Outlook for the Sector. I'm Joan Felbaum Vidra, and I'm the head of Sovereign Ratings at KBRA. Let me start off by saying that these are exciting times for Sovereigns. Well, I'm actually not too sure when there was a time that wasn't exciting for Sovereigns. But having said that, this is certainly a new period. The next stage of the pandemic, with rising inflationary pressures, asymmetric central bank policy responses, and different fiscal paths will create divergences in sovereign credit quality. We at KBRA expect many sovereigns will ride out this next stage fine, perhaps struggling a bit to deal with the new realities, but in credit quality terms to be broadly unaffected. On the other hand, there could be many sovereigns that struggle in credit quality terms, whether because of debt profiles, weak growth momentum, or political risks that force the hand of rate hikes beyond what macro conditions would otherwise warrant. It's always the case with sovereigns that broad thematics are only relevant to some extent, and idiosyncrasies in each sovereign are generally more important in determining credit quality evolution. The next stage will, however, be more challenging. There's been a sharp uptick in debt, and as interest rates rise, and if recovery stalls, debt consolidation will be encumbered. Certain countries that have been enjoying debt payment suspension under multilateral initiatives will face lumpy payments, and we look forward to seeing how that is managed by the creditor community. In terms of KBRA's sovereign's portfolio, many of our listeners may recall we took very measured actions during the course of 2020, recognizing the enormous flexibility that many sovereigns in our rated portfolio enjoyed. 2021 resulted in improving credit quality in our portfolio, with several countries placed on positive outlook and one even upgraded. And one country's watch downgrade was moved to negative outlook, which is also favorable in terms of rating momentum. The conclusion to be drawn is that we believe our sovereign portfolio is well positioned going into 2022 at large. We also note some favorable circumstances in emerging markets that may help tip the balance favorably for them. Emerging markets are largely undersold with less non-resident investment, especially excluding equity, than pre-pandemic and with very favorable terms of trade positioning as well. Improvements in their debt profiles and structural reforms in many also will help those enjoying these characteristics to weather the new challenges ahead. Risks still do stem from Omicron and future variants, and to a lesser extent, perhaps China, which seems to be on a slow sizzle, but still TBD. And also, let's not forget continued geopolitical risks and the sensitivity to oil prices from that. So there are a lot of moving pieces and a lot of unknowns. I'll invite our listeners to please read our recently published Sovereign's 2022 Outlook piece entitled New Challenges Ahead. This podcast supplements that report. And today I'd like to expand on one topic briefly, the importance of inflation expectations. In the US, we know inflation expectations are so firmly rooted, we see this in tips pricing and the yield curve as well as other metrics, despite being a much longer, and I'll use quotes here, temporary inflation than we had thought earlier. Similarly, look at the Bank of Canada's recent decision to hold rates. The flexibility to move slowly in such economies, despite, quote, endurant temporary inflation, is the mark of flexibility and confidence, including confidence about the management of inflation in such economies. Japan provides another good example with low inflation expectations, so low that it affects wage setting even during tight labor markets. What does this all mean? It means central banks and countries where inflation expectations are well anchored down that those central banks can have a lot more patience in terms of normalizing policy. Now, let's take a look at emerging markets. We know several have jumped the gun on rate hikes earlier in the year and are well entrenched in a hiking cycle. And why is that? Well, in those, the threat of inflation and higher inflation expectations means that central banks in those economies need to be, let's say, more proactive about inflation threats. Inflation expectations are naturally self-fulfilling in those economies. Once it rears its ugly head, 
price setting reacts quickly. In those economies, despite a long period of relatively tamed inflation, the anchoring of expectations is at an expected higher level. That is something we continue to watch at KBRA Sovereigns very closely, given the relationship of interest rates to growth and fiscal health. Inflation expectations can complicate economic policy in Japan because they are weak and in many emerging markets because they are too buoyant. In this next period, which involves new challenges, it can create complexities and amplify political risks and risk aversions. As always, feel free to contact us with any questions. We're happy to explain all these ideas more to you. Have a wonderful holiday season and thank you for listening. Happy holidays from KBRA.